right guys, Palo Synth Mania. Synth walk number one, November 19, 2018. And in these walks, I'm gonna answer questions that you guys ask me on the channel. And actually, let me go to the park here because it's too noisy, I'm in near an intersection here. All right, guys, we got uh, nine pages worth of questions, so I'll try to go through them all as I do the morning walk. The first question, Rob Chuckle, Synthmania, do you like the brand new Proteus 2 synth walk? Not understanding exactly what you mean. I'm not aware there is any new Proteus 2 on the market. The Proteus 2, I used to have one, it's a great, uh, orchestral module from EMU, but it's from the 90s. Again from Rob Chuckle, do you like drum walk synth mania? Again, I'm not sure what you understand. Do I like drums? I love drums. I'm not a drummer, but I play the drums. I have a couple of drum sets, one for rock pop, one for jazz. And uh, again, I'm not a drummer, but I can hold a beat. <laughs> James Dunn, how many synthesizers do you have? Any favorite brand? I think right now I have about uh, maybe 30, 40 synthesizers. That's it, synthesizer with keyboards. That's not counting the rack mount synthesizers and samplers. And any favorite brand? Uh, pretty much like all brands, I don't have a particular favorite brand. I, I could say I, uh, I've always been fond of Roland because um, the D50 was uh, the first synth that, that I got. It was kind of professional and I love that sound. Clever Hardy, hi Paolo. It is a good idea to do an exercise while answering questions. My question is, if I am to buy a synthesizer, should I buy a simple synthesizer first, like the Roland SH-101? Personally, I wouldn't buy an SH-101 as a, uh, a first synthesizer because it's monophonic. You better off, I think, if you're trying to learn music and with a polyphonic synthesizer. And uh, if you like that uh, type of panel with sliders and uh, potentiometers, analog style, you may want to look at uh, old Junos or the new Roland product like the SH-201 or the Gaia or the Korg equivalents, so that you still have that way of uh, creating uh, sounds and learning the, the structure, oscillator, filter, envelopes, amplifiers, and um, you have polyphony. KV5, great idea. My question is one, what is the most expensive piece of equipment you've bought? And two, what is your absolute favorite synthesizer keyboard? The most expensive synth that I bought is probably the synthesizer.com modular yeah definitely the synthesizer.com and because I, uh, but I, you know I've built it over the years I started building that system in 2010 so it's been eight years I'm almost done it's supposed to be a studio 88 from synthesizers.com and uh, I believe the cost it's very high it's like $11,000, probably now even more. So, what is your absolute favorite synthesizer? It's a Roland D50. A lot of it is because of the nostalgic reasons. It was the first professional level synth that I got. But uh, of course, I love the sound as well. Sonic Neutronic, if you knew what you knew now and was just starting out right now today, what would be the first three pieces of gear you will buy within a reasonable person's hobby budget. Without a doubt, today, the three pieces of gear I will buy are a media controller keyboard with 61 keys. The 61 keys give you, gives you the optimal range. It's got enough lows and highs that you can do pretty much all music, all types of music. And then I will get a decent quality audio interface, stereo, two channels. There are many offerings uh, from different brands. And um, 
The third item is a set of uh, monitors. Again, you don't need to go overboard. You can get decent monitors for like 500 bucks. And um, I would get the ones with the uh, eight inch woofers if you do electronic music. If you don't, you can get away with um, five or six or seven inch woofers. And uh, of course, this is assuming it's 2018 that you already have a computer. And if you have a Mac, you already have a DAW. GarageBand is just wonderful. And they can, they can upgrade later to Logic. And um, if you have a PC, also there are many choices, you know, Cubase, Pro Tools, everything. John Tamaro, I would like to ask you how you keep being inspired with fresh ideas. I have limited time. And to be fair, limited skills. I struggle in a small amount of time. I can dedicate to my study and practice of music to keep ideas fresh. I always fall back to using the same chord patterns and song flow. Your videos are inspiring to me as you pick a subject or song theme or genre and build a song around it with fantastic results always. Oh, thank you very much, John. How do I keep inspired? I would say that I listen to a lot of music from all types of different genres. I've never understood like when somebody tells me, oh, I only listen to rock or classic rock or only in pop. I, I've always been drawn to all kinds of uh, genres of music and that opens up your mind to different ideas, different types of chords, changes and uh, sounds that you wouldn't normally use in other genres. And when you put them all together after years and years, you kind of build those muscles in your memory that tells you, that tell you, oh, you, you, this combination of chords sounds cool if you use it with a synth pad or a saxophone or anything, an organ. So I would just uh, listen to a lot of music, have a lot of influences, just always be on the lookout for cool ideas. Uh, they're always around you. Dust Goss, awesome. I think you could pick up a few themes and run with them, lol. For example, different paths for beginners getting into synths. Maybe an episode on equipment disasters, episode on performance successes and disasters, long chat on your path through music, 80s one day, 90s another day, etc. That's a great, great idea. I'll definitely do that. And um, to just answer one quick question here, oh, equipment disasters uh, episode. Good morning. Equipment disasters. I remember sometimes in the 80s, I was still a teenager playing. We were playing with a band that had a, like a resort, like a camping resort where they have a huge swimming pool. And uh, we had a group of friends. There was a kind of jokester, Luigi, if you're watching this. Yeah, Luigi is a typical Italian name. It's not the brother of Mario. But this is, was a friend of mine. And we were playing at this gig and it was a disaster because the power kept constantly in and out, in and out, every five, 10 minutes. So it was a disaster, people hated us. We came to understand later that it was Luigi who was um, by the, the pool side where the main cable line for the power was going to the PA. And he, he was, there was an extension cord and he was detaching it in and out every few minutes, unbeknown to us. And it was a disaster and I don't even think the owner of the venue paid us that night. <laughs> so, of course, you know, he was a jokester, loved Luigi. But yeah, thanks for the idea, Dos Gios. I will definitely do more videos on uh, the path through music, the 80s one day, the 90s the other day. Bartini, which one has more capabilities in creating unusual sounds? Korg MS-20 Mini or Behringer or Behringer Neutron? I think the Behringer Neutron has probably a slight, a slight edge uh, compared to the Korg MS-20. They're pretty similar, but uh, Behringer has that uh, incredible patch bay to the right with a lot more patch points than the Korg MS-20. So if you're looking for unusual sounds, probably the Behringer 
will give you unusual sounds. Also has a great BBD delay. Built in. And uh, if you set up the BBD delay in um, with just a few milliseconds of delay, you get those wonderful resonant, almost like ring modulator sounds, which are awesome. Poto's huge cock. Nice username. Also, man, I have actually a two part question. For some background, I am a 40 year old guitarist and musician with a pretty good ear who has recently fell in love. I believe it's fallen in love. With since I'm learning slowly. Welcome to the dark side. That's what I say usually. I'm really big into synthwave 80s retro wave music now, and I guess my questions are to be a good synth player, should I take piano lessons? It really seems to me that synth players and piano players either look at the keypad differently from one another in regards to their actual playing. Also, I really want to learn the art of sound designing from synthesis. I want to learn how to create my own personal sounds. Any suggestions? All right, this is what I think. I don't think you necessarily need piano lessons. Personally, I took like two or three, four years of uh, classical piano lessons when I was a kid and um, really didn't do much for me. I pretty much self-taught. I'm a, an autodidact. I learn by myself just by listening to records and uh, try to figure out the uh, chords myself and the, the melodies. Also today you have YouTube. So there's so many great channels out there that teach you how to play the piano. I'll, I'll put some uh, links to the ones I like in, um, in the description below. But uh, yeah, you can learn it by yourself. And um, I think, you know, I know that you guys, the guitarists, uh, have a way of remembering shapes of uh, the hands when you play the guitar. Same thing happens with uh, keyboard players. We, we remember shapes, you know, like if you start with a small, with the triads, you know, so you have the a chord, let's say a major chord, you use the, the pinky, the middle finger, and the thumb to do a chord and you remember that shape. Then you move on to the four chord shapes, you know, you maybe add a seventh or ninth and so forth. And you create that muscle memory just like you do with the, with the guitar. And uh, you'll get there in no time. It's all about creating that muscle memory that, so that you know what a, a C minor six looks like and sounds like. And you apply it when you play the piano. To learn synthesis from scratch, probably the best way is to get a modular or semi-modular synthesizer, either software or hardware, but it will give you the foundation to learn the usual three components of sounds, the oscillator, the filter, the amplifier, and all that stuff. And you will soon realize how moving some controls shapes the sound, the envelopes, the LFOs, there are some great uh, affordable synthesizers like the Bering Ha Neutron or the Korgs or Roland. Uh, everybody is making a uh, Eurorack is huge. Of course, the only catch, these are monophonic sounds. So if you're looking for polyphony, look at the, maybe a new Dave Smith synthesizer, Oberheim, new Oberheim, and, or the new Korg Prologue. Anything that has a clear structure of the sounds from left to right, where you can sculpt your sounds. Richard Wally, where do you buy and sell your gear? I usually, uh, yeah, I sell, I sell and buy gear all the time. I'm usually on eBay. I usually use eBay. Sometimes I use Craigslist and I also have uh, many friends who play keys. So I would say maybe 80% is eBay. 10% is Craigslist and 10% is word of mouth trade with friends. The Orange Peak, what do you do for a living? Love you, cheers. Well, thanks, I love you too. I am a married man, but I love you too. Uh, what I do, uh, usually when uh, people ask me the question, what do you do for a living? I always joke around. I used to say I'm a high-end male escort. One time I told this guy, what do you do for a living? I have a small, a busy toupee factory. He kind of believed it and he said, oh nice, uh, do you use uh, natural or synthetic hair? And I replied, mostly equine. <laughs> that, was, uh, 
this is my jokester side of me. But no, I work in IT, I'm a network engineer. I've been in telecom for 20 years. I work with uh, routers and switches, Cisco mainly. The Orange Peak, do you like the Aira series? <laughs> yeah, I definitely like the Aira series. I have the TR8 and the TB3, and I really want to buy the, um, the Vocoder one, the green Vocoder. Yinte Klub Blunt 666. What's your opinion on metal music? I love metal music. In fact, you know, I'm due to create the Bunny in the Snow metal song very soon. In the 80s, I used to listen to a lot of, not necessarily metal, but, you know, they call it hair metal or hard rock of the 80s. And uh, bands uh, like, um, I forget the name of the band. The ones that did uh, We Care a lot, love that band. It was that cross of 80s, 90s where metal was crossing with hip hop, really cool. But yeah, in the 80s, I listened to a lot of, um, maybe not exactly metal, but a lot of hard rock, of course, you know, Deep Purple, Led Zeppelin, and um, also, yeah, some heavy metal, I remember the band Accept, and uh, what was the other band? I'm bad with remembering names, but yeah, I, I love the energy of uh, heavy metal music, even though there's... Uh, uh, it's more like guitar focus rather than synths, but especially I know that in the North Europe, European uh, scene, they use a lot of synths, great, beautiful synths, choirs and strings, so definitely very energetic, I like it. Dreskif123, no, Dreskif23, what is the professional level studio you built used for? For my personal shenanigans in the home studio that I have. Uh, again, you know, I haven't built that. You don't build, you don't build room in one day, as they say. I started with, um, like everybody else, with one keyboard. And then you get one drum machine again, one effect process, and then one mixing console, and then a couple of speakers. And then you buy a Sinclair. Chris Jackson, your favorite local coffee sandwich shop. Lol. Sorry, I haven't quite got the hang of this yet. It's the first thing that popped into my head. Like the sync walk idea. I hope you get tons of intelligent questions. Sure. Good morning. Then I, for coffee, I make my own coffee. I'm Italian, so I like my espresso in the morning, as you've seen at the beginning of this video. For sandwiches, I quite enjoy a place, a small chain in my area called Santini. It's like a New York style deli. Awesome sandwiches. Shank, what was your first instrument and what was your first synth? My first instrument was a guitar. When I was a really small child, my mother signed me up for classical guitar lessons. And because she had some, uh, I had a good friend who was taking it. So of course, you know, when you're seven, eight, you want to do what your f friends do. Uh, I might have been like nine or 10, I don't remember. But also my mother had some friends who played the acoustic guitar and on her on their suggestion they got this Giannini beautiful classical guitar which I still have in Italy the problem was huge it was too big for a child and so I never got into it and it was very difficult to play I remember struggling I did learn some cool classical parts with it but uh, basically that guitar made me switch to keyboard my very first synth that I that I bought was a Casio CZ1000 in 1987, I think. Although I had placed many synths before, like the Poly 800, because we used to go to a good friend of mine had the Poly 800 and uh, in high school, and um, also we used to go to the recording studios, the small recording studios in our towns. They had uh, Fender Rhodes and other synthesizers.
Laundry 3, I have one. Do you have any advice for making a really deep sounding ethereal pads in digital synthesizers? What do I need to watch out for? And what are the ways to give it that deep sound? I would say to do deep sounding ethereal pads on digital synthesizers, you want to use um, uh, definitely maybe one oscillator at one octave and the other oscillator one octave lower. Lower the cutoff filter, apply generous amounts of chorus, digital chorus, and of course a lot of reverb and um, delay. And uh, if you have a delay that can do modulation, of course, you know, plugins, they all do it these days. So, but one particularly favorite combination of mine is to do the JD990 Roland pads with an AMS DMX 1580S digital delay that has VCO modulation and that sound is to die for in my opinion. Magic Monster. Cool idea. I love all your videos. Great stuff. I would like to hear more about you. Did you produce tracks in the great Italo disco time in the 80s or techno stuff in the 90s? I would love to know that. Good morning. Thank you, Paul. All the best. I know, I, I mean, I, yeah, I did one record, techno record in the early 90s, never went anywhere. <laughs> and then uh, my family, nobody was really a musician. So. I was never really encouraged to do it and um, I guess I took the path of uh, deciding not to become a musician though I, I did consider going to conservatory at some point but um, it didn't happen for me but you know I do music as my passion and I found my niche I think right now on uh, YouTube and uh, of course I created a lot of material over the years made a couple records but uh, you know it's a very tough business uh, music business and I'm still trying I'm still trying never know never know Keith Brinson what do you think of the Roland V synth GT specifically the infrared beam resonance and cutoff hand filter love the V synth I used to have the original V synth when it came out love that board I regret selling it and in fact I would get a GT even though you lose the if I remember correctly you lose the the VC1 VC2 built-in cards uh, the expansion cards but yeah fantastic synth the D beam when I had the synth I didn't use the D beam so much because there are so many other ways of affecting the parameters of the sounds a uh, after touch modulation knobs um, so but yeah it's a cool one more effect at your disposal. Red Skyline, what is the best synth of all time? The Casio VL1. Good morning. Toby9000, what do you think about jazz music? How much is it an influence in your own music? What era do you like? Thanks. I love jazz music, of course. Uh, uh, I've never been, I'm not a real jazz player. I can dabble with it, uh, some of the techniques and chords. I try to play with uh, jazz bands in the past. Maybe it was bad luck, but uh, both bands that I was with, I really didn't gel with those guys. Kinda big egos. So, so yeah, I'm, I'm sure it was just my, my luck. I'm sure there are plenty of uh, fantastic jazz players out there. I even took some lessons. So at some point, but it just never went anywhere. At the core, I'm not a jazz player, I'm more like a pop guy. Synth pop, electronic, whatever you wanna call it. And um, what era do you like for jazz? For jazz, I really loved the 1950s. It was a super cool era. Like, I'm thinking records like uh, Gil Evans, uh, Out of the Cool, Into the Hot, those, that type of uh, era, just fantastic. Of course, Miles Davis and uh, my favorite piano player was um, Errol Garner. He's my favorite jazz piano pianist. Um, of course, also Oscar Peterson, Chick Corea, a bunch of other people. But um, Errol Garner, it's what I would play if I were a jazz player. Dazzling69, what is your opinion on the Roland MC family of groove boxes? Would you ever have ever used one? Yes. In the 90s, I used to have the MC-303, and then I got the MC-505. 
and also I used to have the orange one I forget the model name was that the D2 or something and I'm sure I had a few more and I also tried the the larger model like the MC 808 great boxes I think they as I remember the the MC 303 got a bad rap when it came out because um, it didn't sound like a 303 and oh outrage but like anything else you have uh, cycles in life guarantee as soon as somebody uses a pattern from the MC 303 to do a hit or a cool song that will skyrocket in price and uh, you'll pay three thousand dollars for an MC 303 or 505 but yeah basically the sound engine of those MC boxes was the Roland JV series and um, I've always liked the sound of those machines it's digital you know it's uh, but right now we are in the 80s revival but uh, the 90s revival is definitely coming back so that sound is gonna come back too Porta Latro why do the low bit rate samples sound good do we really need any high-end gear we don't need it necessarily but it's great that uh, progress allows us uh, to have even more wonderful gear every year and uh, probably you know yeah probably you're not gonna hear the difference between you know I still use 44.1 I'll use 24 bits maybe even 32 bits for you know more resolution but uh, you know the theorem in theory 44.1 should be more than enough for the the range of uh, humans uh, and as you get older <laughs> Uh, you really don't hear I mean I I still have pretty good hearing but it gets you know I have like 11,000 12,000 cycles I mean you already struggle to hear what's going on up there so yeah it doesn't really matter resolution you can make uh, great songs with uh, anything really a drum Berabub what do you think of Bering 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 Horace business releasing clones of old famous synths and drum machines i think it's great uh i have a couple of uh better her synths the neutron and the model d and great machines and very affordable i guess you're trying to ask me the ethical aspect of uh releasing clones um i read an art uh actually uli bettinger himself is very active on the forums and there are plenty of times where i read his stuff and he explains that really it's not that easy and they redo the circuits pretty much all together even though obviously they are inspired by the original machines but but you know not everybody can afford to buy real TR-808 so they sound good and they are affordable Ryan Smith are you worried about the new article 13 copyright legislation uh, I don't know too much about it yeah I read a few articles on it um I'm not worried particularly but uh, it's never good when you have uh, governments regulating and stuff it never ends well you know that so article 13 it's basically people are afraid that um, they're gonna force the providers to censor stuff that's copyrighted and uh, it's gonna be pretty much impossible to monitor and number two people are gonna find a way to circumvent it and number three yeah it could cause problems with a uh, censorship from uh, entities which we definitely don't want especially not the European government however I'll say that uh, especially on YouTube there are a lot of uh, people who blatantly use other people's content to make money and they don't get caught and again like everything in life moderation there is a thing called the fair use which i'm sure everybody is familiar with and pretty much you know when you're using a piece of uh, copyrighted material for fair use i do the same thing you know like i'll show how people how to use uh, how to play say gypsy woman the organ chord you know that's a copyrighted thing but it falls under fair use because i'm showing somebody else how to play it I don't, and I also typically I don't think I monetize those videos anyway. Rob Smith needs some help on composition and arrangement in general. I love house, deep house, tech house, techno, but really struggle with that, getting the flow right. 
in terms of where to place the various drums, in particular any guidance or any genre would be great. Cheers, Paul. Well, Rob, it's um, the drums are very important in those genres that you mentioned, but it's not all. You want to come up with a good chord structure, something that grabs people's attention. And for drums, you want to use uh, typical TR-909 sounds and uh, build-ups. One thing, cool thing that you can do, people do a lot on the TR-909s, you want to vary it. You want to vary some sounds, like keep the kick drum steady, but then uh, like move the knobs for the hi-hat minimal variations of sound that create a more interesting uh, variation as you build your song. Adrian Johnson, good on you for deciding to get some exercise, man. I struggle with motivation for it myself. My question is, how did you get into synthesizers or post to music in general, and how did you learn to play? Many thanks and keep up the good work. Thanks, Adrian. Adrian, um, I got into synthesizer when I was a very small child six years old 1975 i still remember this episode i was in my mother's lap i was still in italy back at the time and um, there was a show on tv a competition during the summer it was called the festival bar or something like that and um, this uh, italian artist one of the first italian artists to use the moog synthesizer came on the show with uh, this song called Amore Grande, Amore Libero, which means it's a free, it's a big love, it's a free love. Had a very haunting mini Moog melody. And I still remember it to this day. It was a, I told, I, I was in love with that sound. I told my mother, mom, I think this song is gonna win the competition. And it did win. <laughs> so that was the first episode of my life that I, love synthesizers then I guess for until I was a teenager I learned piano classical piano and then 1983 1984 1985 Italo Disco happened and I happened to be there and of course it was synthesizer galore started loving synthesizers even more and it grew and grew how did I learn to, to play by listening to other people play Listen to a lot of uh, records growing up, or radio, and um, trying to copy what they were doing. Slowly but surely, you know, the usual put the 10,000 hours of work in, and that's what I did. Timber Mika, what is your opinion on overpriced products? They suck. I don't like overpriced products, I like uh, rightly priced products. Marty, the Vampire One. I have a few for you, Paolo. What are your top 10 cents albums to listen to? Most inspiring piece of gear you own? Most disappointing purchase and why? What cents are still on your wish list? Which ones are you yet to play? Is there a clone or synth you would like to see remade? How do you deal with ongoing maintenance issues? I had a run recently where loads of things went, went wrong one after the other and fixing them is a bit of a nightmare. Keep up the good work and enjoy your walks. Wow, that's a, that's a lot of questions. Thank you, Marty. Let's go one at a time. What are your top 10 synth albums to listen to? Ooh. Again, I'm bad with names. Of course, uh, I like all the, the classic. Uh, when I grew up and learning to play the synthesizer, uh, I love uh, Keith Emerson, so definitely ELP, Emerson, Lake and Palmer. And uh, I'm blanking here, but sure, Pink Floyd, Kraftwerk, uh, Depeche Mode. I bought all the Depeche Mode records, of course, in the 80s. Uh, uh, Talk Talk. And uh, um, pretty much all the 80s uh, synth music I really enjoy. Most inspiring piece of gear you own? I would have to say it's my synthesizers.com modular synth. The possibilities are endless on that thing. And uh, you can really, I, th I feel that uh, it's my sound. I can create uh, my sound on, uh, on the dot com. 
most disappointing purchase and why uh none that i can think of right now pretty much like all gear i always find a use for any type of gear that i put my hands on what scents are still on your wish list many <laughs> for instance i'd like to get soon the roland jupiter 4 maybe roland uh, sh2 and uh, i want to get a profit 5 rev 2 i've had at least three or four rev 3 profits over the years but uh, i've never had the rev 2 i played it at uh, my friend tom's house and uh, yeah there's a difference and it sounds great so that's on uh, my list for sure and of course the alka syntax which i kicked myself for not buying when i was still in italy you could find it for 250 dollars or 500 dollars which ones are you yet to play i haven't played the moog one yet looking forward to playing that is there a clone or synth you would like to see remade maybe the cork politics i used to that was my first analog synthesizer that i bought in 1987 love the politics i need to get another one at some point how do you deal with ongoing maintenance issues if it's small things like keyboard contacts or buttons or knobs or simple things i can trace myself i have a small lab in my house i can fix it myself if not i have to take it to a professional technician music is there a synth or other instrument gear everybody seems to like which you don't like can't relate to at all if so what it is, is it and why again there aren't too many pieces of gear that i don't like uh can't think of anything right now that i don't like uh, and other people like a lot pretty much i'm i'm of the belief that you can make great music uh, i, I want to make this video in the future call gear doesn't matter with uh basically how i'm gonna use the fairlight and the casio vl1 because hits have been made on both machines one super expensive one very affordable Ben H, who are your top synthesizer players, bands that use synthesizers? And again, I'm bad at remembering names, but I have to repeat myself. I'm definitely gonna put uh, Keith Emerson up there. And uh, of course, Ray Manzarek from The Doors, even though that was a strictly a synthesizer, rather than Oregon, but uh, you know, Depeche Mode again, Tangerine Dream, Kraftwerk, of course way too many to list ben h what are your thoughts on the arturia matrix brute and the moog one and would you consider purchasing either absolutely the i tried the matrix matrix brute it's a brute it's awesome it's an awesome keyboard definitely would like to get that at some point same thing for the moog one i haven't played one myself yet but the demo sounds stellar you know i have the memory moog and i have uh the micro brute so those will do for now <laughs> the zod okay here's my question why does italy have such an excellent heritage when it comes to electronic music many fabulous composers like claudio simonetti fabio frizzi and others score amazing soundtracks in the 70s and 80s uh, the italo disco sound dominated in the 80s and it, again it evolved into italo house i'm going overboard here and techno in the 90s is it in your blood to a degree i think yes it's in the blood well we are italians are grow up with a melody and a strong sense of music of course we have hundreds of years of music and uh, so you kind of grew up with uh, the you know the giuseppe verdi rossini puccini it's 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 you grew up grow up with that type of environment and also in the movies um, i was fortunate to live in italy as a kid in the 70s and a teenager in the 80s a young adult in the 90s early 90s and mid 90s i was exposed to a lot of um composers that came from uh, the golden era of the 50s and 60s and 70s Ennio Morricone, Piero Migliani, Rizzo Ortolani, there are so many great Italian composers. So, so yeah, to a degree, I think it is the, the air. So Italy is a very beautiful country. And um, it's an easy living, as I say. 
Uh, lots of problems in a lot of ways. Beautiful country, I do miss it. But uh, yeah, we love uh, Italians, love synthesizer, man. Justin Casey, love your channel, brother. I've been watching your vids for a few years, and it's great to see all the best equipment in the hands of somebody who not only truly loves it all, but is such a capable player. Well, thanks. My question is this, how the F can you afford it all, both financially and emotionally with the family? Well, I'm not a musician. <laughs> I, um, you know, I, I don't do anything out of the ordinary, I don't think, other than uh, I work hard, been saving for a long time, and I also invest in real estate. I'm a strong believer in real estate. And um, I kind of grew up with that uh, being brought up my grandfather was a real estate developer, so I don't believe in fiat currency, I believe in uh, tangible real estate. The family is very understanding of me, they know this is my passion. My wife is very understanding, so are my kids. I do spend a lot of time with them, but I also spend a lot of time in the studio. Wahid Saidi, do you have a, some extra EPROM sound for the DMX like the Fat Snare? or electric drums or cowbell congas etc i would love to see that on a future video yes i do have some eproms for the drum machines i haven't managed to make a video about it yet actually i think i have also an eprom burner somewhere and at some point i do i wanted to do my own burn my own chips but uh, i never did it so yeah it's something i can do for sure i have a few for the lin drum for the lin 9000 for the sequential good morning and uh, so yeah i'll do a video about it musica vien hello we need your help how would you copy the baseline or the groove of the following piece of which device or software would you use here's the link to the piece and there is a youtube link uh i have to get back to you on this one as i'm walking but um uh, i'll put the answer in the comments below ping pong 85 paolo how do you apply a reverb effect to multiple synths when recording, assuming multi-tracking. Do you keep the same reverb setting for each setting or do you have to tweak each instrument or have completely different effect unit for each track? Thanks, yeah, usually I use different settings, different uh, sizes of reverb. You can um, create really cool ambience uh, from using small reverb settings on synthesizer. And for the big pads, you want to use a larger reverb. Also, another cool to use is to use a delay instead of reverb. Especially at lower settings, lower feedback, and it kind of gels the track together. Barles Charkley Jr. What are important differences between the Roland Juno 106 and Jupiter? And you don't specify the, which Jupiter, but I'm assuming it's the Jupiter 8 you're talking about many many differences and that's why the jupiter 8 is very expensive these days probably around ten thousand dollars and the juno 106 is still around a thousand why such a difference in price because the jupiter is a lot more capable of course they both sound fantastic but i'm trying to picture the both panels in my mind here first difference uh two oscillators instead of one on the Jupiter and of course uh, the Jupiter has a cross mod and uh, the Jupiter has eight voices instead of six the Jupiter has um, a powerful arpeggiator which includes an awesome random uh, feature on the Jupiter you can do split and layers so yeah both uh, great machines you can probably get a similar sound if you use a Juno 60 compared to the Jupiter, but uh, the Juno 106 is fantastic as well. Michael Cunningham, Fortinet, you do IT? I do IT security for a living, yeah. I was wearing a shirt that had the Fortinet logo yesterday. What do you do for a living? Yeah, I work in IT. Um, I don't do security. Well, I dabble with firewalls every now and then, mostly the routers and switches of Cisco. I've been in telecom for 20 years. You have a massive synth collection. I assume you have a commercial studio of some sorts. In your basements, it seems. What are your favorite synths? What do you actually use the most and the least? What are the instruments besides guitar and, and bass you play? How long have you been making music? Perhaps 
you can tackle that what goes in your head process when writing songs on one walk with maybe a few examples when you get back from your walk might be a multi-parter yeah thank you michael yes um my basement studio is just for myself uh, sometimes i have friends coming over and play I pretty much use all my instruments. Uh, if I don't use an instrument, I get rid of it, I sell it. But I make a point to rotate synthesizers um, on a regular base, basis. And uh, besides the guitar and bass, uh, I play a little bit of trumpet, a little bit of saxophone, the drums. How long have I been making music? For a long time, I was a child. I think uh, I started recording when I was uh, playing the piano. I must have been like 11 or 12. I'm 49 now. The process of uh, making songs, uh, it varies. Uh, sometimes the inspiration strikes, uh, especially in the evening, I feel I'm most productive. And um, yeah, I'll definitely do a multi-parter for this because it, it's, uh, it's a big topic. Shinji Kodai Clarence Watterson. Can you do a how-to series, how to plug into Pro Tools, etc.? Sure, I'm not sure if the question is uh, specific enough for me to understand it clearly. Usually when people put the etc. there, which literally, you know, I studied Latin and ancient Greek in high school. Thanks mom, as I always say. Et cetera, et cetera means literally et other, and other things. So you only put one thing there, Pro Tools. Usually when people, usually when people say et cetera, they put at least three things there. So how do you plug into Pro Tools? Maybe you want to add like, uh, how do you connect an interface to Pro Tools? How do you play virtual instruments in Pro Tools? So yeah, you need to be a little bit more specific and I'll be happy to answer you. At Rosa, have you ever thought about doing a Bandcamp page and feature the songs you complete on your demos and make them available for purchase? Sure, yes, actually, I want to make my own little label at some point if I can. Problem is the time. I have a day job. And uh, although we're doing a Bandcamp song with uh, my friend Jeff, he's an excellent singer. We're doing a song taken from one of my demos, in fact. We'll be featuring uh, on the channel very soon. Sizak Studio, have you, have you used your Antelope audio interface yet? And are you still planning to do a review of it? Yes, I kind of forgot about that interface because I was going to use it for the mastering room. It turns out that the mastering room, it's uh, become my storage room. <laughs> so I have to postpone the plan of having a mastering room, even though I bought the gear for it. But yes, I'll do the review. Racer Guy 180, what's your favorite waveform? Sawtooth. Stumptus, the best year in music was when? Great question. Without hesitation, 1984. I'm very partial to 1984. I think it was a fantastic year for music. I was 15, and of course that probably has an impact because uh, you tend to like music when you're in your teenager years and 20s, and then life gets in the way. But 1984, check it out. It had so many beautiful songs. It was a, the year where Bronski Beat, Small Town Boy, came out and um, drive by the cars and uh, Talk Talk, such a same wonderful, wonderful song. Phil Collins, uh, Against the Lods. So many other beautiful songs that year. So check it out. The Pesh Mode, I think uh, Blasphemous Rumors came out that year. So yeah, check it out, 1984 for pop music. Yawuz Baizal, are there any underrated or, obs or obscure scents you would recommend? Maybe ones you feel don't get another attention. I think today in the era of the internet, those times are gone, everybody knows everything. All you need to do is Google for it. So in the 90s, I could have told you about some uh, unknown scents, but today everybody knows everything. There are, there are some um, scents that I recommend that are not in fashion right now. For example, you know, right now we're going through a 1980s revival, so plenty of uh, analog scents or emulation thereof. The 90s are due for a comeback, in my opinion. So look at the older 90s modules from Roland, like the JV series, from EMU, all the EMU modules, Korg, uh, the M, M series, T series, uh, Zero One series, uh, N series, and so forth. Uh, yeah, look out for 
stuff from the 90s that nobody wants right now. It's gonna come back up. Barth Charkley Jr., how do you record guitar bass into your computer? For guitar, I usually uh, pl place a microphone on top of the guitar amp, and then I go through the preamplifier on my mixing console, Soundcraft. For bass, I often go direct using um, a DI or just plug into the mixer, it's fine. And uh, if I wanna get a little bit more woof, a little bit more low frequencies, I'll, I'll mic the cabinet from the bass, but um, usually I go DI for the bass. And then for the interface, I use an SSL Alpha Link recording to DAW. Daniel or Daniel Renteria, have you ever had or used one of the Roland Groove box machines? Yes, yeah, somebody already asked the question. I, I, I have used them. As Guimal, what work clock do you use in the studio if you use one? Have any set up with one grand MIDI control to use with all the equipment or you use one you need? Uh, I don't have a dedicated uh, master clock. I use uh, the clock from um, the SSL Madi Extreme card, 64. For MIDI, I used to have uh, several MIDI interfaces in the 90s. I sold them all, because right now, really, for the YouTube channel, uh, what I tend to do is to grab one piece of equipment or two or three, and just focus on those just for that one video. And then I put it back on the shelf. Julian Romero, are you into any of the new Kurzweil stuff, Forte? I haven't tried the Forte yet, but I've seen the demos. Fantastic board, of course, high-end piano. Awesome sound. Lubert does. Paolo, I've always been amazed at the synth opening to the Vizar song, Damn Don't Cry, and then he gives a link. Can you give me your analysis on how this was done? Synth legend Billy Curry from Ultravox was almost certainly involved in this. Thanks and keep up the good work. Don't remember off the top of my head what it sounds like. I'm sure I have it. Yeah, I have it. I'll, uh, I'll get back to you in the comments. Eric Parisot, nice idea, Paolo. I have so many questions, but if you accept it, money is more a challenge. Are you capable to make a track freestyle without synth or other instruments using just natural elements like wood, water, earth, wind, and fire, and toys, kitchen element, vegetables, animals, or human sounds like mouth, step, clap? Beatboxing, barking dog, meow cat, etc. To long list. You can sample all the sounds and use a DAW for the final results. Or if you want, just recording all the stuff in one shot with a real studio track recorder. Authorized effects, comp, EQ, delay, and reverb. Sorry for my real bad English language. Your English is fine. Greetings from France. Yeah, of course, I've done that many times in the past. And actually, I have this idea. <laughs> yeah, I don't think anybody has done it on YouTube, so keep it to ourselves, but uh, if and when I get the 100,000 uh, subscriber silver button, I already thought I wanna do a song using just that. So like tapping the, the button, scraping the button, sampling it and making a techno song with the silver play button. So yeah, please uh, share, like and subscribe and um, make sense many I go to 100K. Poke 493, what exactly is side chaining and compression in general? I think I get the idea, but it's also confusing. Yeah, compression is definitely can be confusing if you're studying now, but basically the main idea of compression is to reduce the dynamic range of something. And the side chain is just one more tool you can use. Um, it's overused today in uh, dance music. But there are many other people who have done tutorials on it. If you want, I'll be happy to do a, a tutorial. But basically the idea with the side chain is to use the compressor to bring down the volume of another part. So typical, the typical use this use this day is just to use the bass drum to compress the bass. And uh, so that since there are similar frequencies that they, they, uh, they don't mess with each other. So when the drum kick hits, the bass gets lower and it doesn't interfere with the same frequency. And that creates a bigger sound. But you can also use it, historically, you can use it with an equalizer for de-essing, or you can use it for as a ducking, and all the radio stations use, uh, use it for ducking. So when um, when there's only music, uh, you can hear the music, but when this, the radio announcer starts talking, then the music 
automatically the level the dynamic goes down so yeah definitely look it up there are plenty of people who have done videos on the subject but uh if you want i'll do one too christopher williams i have wondered how the rich history of music in italy has inspired you and i have also wondered if you are an acquaintance of friends or friends of hans jürgen fritz yeah definitely yeah i was just answering another person italy has influenced me tremendously growing in, up in italy was a huge influence uh, because of the sense of the melody especially uh, are you a friend of hans jürgen uh, fritz no i'm not <laughs> no i don't know him i would love to meet him though rogers guitar and stuff which synth is better for an oberheim lyle may square lead sound the jp8 the JX8P or the DW8000. Hmm. So, if I remember correctly, Lion May's uh, sound was uh, Oberheim four voice or eight voice. So, both keyboards are analog or DCOs, but analog. And so, they will give you the sound. You can probably get it on both using the um, square waveform. King Korg, can you make a tutorial with the synth bass arpeggio from Limousine? Hubert Ka is a very common for 80s, but I have no idea how they do it. Uh, I have to look it up. I don't remember this song, so I'll look it up and put it in the description. Alexis Angel, can you show us how to program the Lindrum intro to Love is a Battlefield? Ha, huh? Pat Benatar. Yes, I will put it in the to do list. Pizza Gogo, hi Paolo. It's, if it's not a real question, you seem to be able to get sense that are both rare plus in extraordinary condition. EG like the latest in clavier. I'm not a US Europe, so don't know if this is normal, but can I ask you how find how you find such mint ones? It's the luck of uh, it's just luck. It's just luck. Uh, yeah, the Sinclair was in an excellent condition. I've had keyboards that were not in excellent condition. I had to return a few because they don't work. And people tell you they are working perfectly on eBay. And then uh, they don't, so it's just luck. Jack VTK, what do you think about the modern talking sound? Great, I grew up with the modern talking sound and uh, I love a lot of their songs. Great synthesizers, so yeah, great sound. Butcher, RKMB, hey Paolo, what do you think of Electron Gear, especially the analog rhythm? Did you try it out? Yeah, no, I haven't tried the analog rhythm yet. But I plan to do so. Love Electron Gear, even though I don't have any yet, but I plan to get some of it. Meme Extremist. Good idea, sir. My question is, do you have any recommendations on compressor VST or mastering ones? Thank you and good luck on the exercise. Thanks. Uh, I don't have too many plugins. I'm usually a hardware guy, but uh, yeah, there is, um, there is a free plugin for compression that was fantastic. I cannot remember the name of it right now. Let me think. Again, I'm bad with names. I can't. Catal I, I have to look it up and I'll put it in the description. Ron Muir, if you were only to use a single workstation synth to make dance music, what would you be your favorite and why? I started on the Roland D20 and then progressed to a Yamaha SY85. Yeah, I would definitely use a sampling workstation. So the sky's the limit, you can sample your own sounds. Something like the, you know, I used to, in the 90s, um, the Roland W30 was my main axe. I love that board, I still have it. Just, uh, you cannot go wrong with a sampler. That, I'll, that has a sequencer and uh, maybe some effects. Kev Barker, how do virtual instruments stack up against your hardware? Uh, they they stuck up pretty well. I don't have again. I don't have too much in terms of uh, soft sense. I do have a few that I bought along the years. I tend to use more hardware for some reason because probably that's because I grew up with uh, hardware. But software instruments have come be, have come a long way from the 90s, where also audio interfaces uh, were not very good and latency. Yeah, like 10 milliseconds of latency. It's very hard to play. But now, they sound fantastic, so they stack up very well. Are they gonna be exactly the same thing 
say for instance the recreation of a Jupiter 8 compared to plug-in probably not but uh, in, in the mix nobody's number one in the mix nobody's gonna no, and number two, it's the music that you make with. It's the music that you make, not the gear you use. Hey Kiwi, hi, great idea question. What are the origins of OMI2 Libraries Liquid Stack Sound? Sample originally from which sense, which presets, etc. Cheers from Flin Finland. Thanks, uh, um, yeah, that's a great question. I don't know exactly what they use for the OMI Classic Stack. Beautiful sound, yes, absolutely. I have an idea that they use some uh, high-end digital synths like uh, the Yamaha DX series and uh, probably some uh, high-end analog synths and combined MIDI, maybe the Jupiters and uh, Oberheim. So all stacked in layers. Maxcam, hi Paolo, what sense, hi Paolo, what sense drum machines do you plan to buy in the near future? What are your favorite video game movie OSCs? I plan to buy the Jupiter 4 fairly soon and the Prophet 5 Rev 2. The drum machine probably I'm gonna buy in Roland R8 again, maybe the Roland R8 Mark II because I used to have it in the 90s and it was awesome. What are your favorite video game movie OSCs? Uh, I'm not a gamer. <laughs> you know, the only games I played I really when I was a kid, uh, Space Invaders and uh, Frogger, Galaga, those type of things. My kids are, my boys are big gamers, um, but I'm not. And um, movie OSTs, definitely lots of them. I can think, of course, you know, Blade Runner soundtrack is the classic. But uh, anything with uh, synthesizers that I like. Uh, um, there was a soundtrack for Interstellar that I really enjoyed. I really liked the sounds from the 1970s uh, movies. They have uh, really cool bubbly synthesizers lines. All right, guys, that's it for the first synth walk. Thank you all so much for your great questions. And um, please feel free to ask more questions in the description below of this video so I can have questions for synth walk number two. I hope you enjoyed the walk. I sure surely did enjoy reading all the questions. Some really cool ones in there. And uh, I'm gonna go home, take a shower, and go to work. So thanks again, guys. I'll see you at the next second walk.